I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall discuss the flow through a steam nozzle. In fact, uh, we have started our discussion on this topic in the last class and if we can recall in the last class we could drive the expression which relates the change in area or area Mach number relationship. So, that particular relation that we have established in the last class is known as the area Mach number relationship of a flow nozzle. So, if we try to write what we had uh, you know derived in the last class. So, let me write flow through a nozzle. I should say the flow analysis for the analysis we had you know discussed in the last class, we had to take a few assumptions. What are those? The flow is frictionless both internal and external there is no heat interaction between the system and surroundings. If we assume that the flow is taking place through the nozzle, then walls of the nozzle are insulated. We had considered that the flow is 1 D, 1 dimensional and we had also discussed that you know isentropic flow can be represented by an isentropic process. So, I am not going to write all those assumptions, but what we could write in the last class the area Mach number relationship that is 1 upon k into d p by p into 1 minus m square upon m square. So, if we give this is equation number 1. So, this k is basically index of expansion for the you know isentropic process that we have mentioned and we assume that steam flow is assumed to be one dimensional right and this is the flow or compressible fluid flow. through nozzle. Now, let us discuss today a few you know important points. In fact, we can draw a few important conclusion from this particular equation. So, first we discuss about the physical significance. of equation 1, because today we shall try to have the expression of the mass flow rate through the nozzle or through the convergent divergent channel, but before going to have this expression have the expression of mass flow rate, let us briefly discuss about the physical significance of equation 1. Of course, concerning with the flow through a nozzle, not nozzle rather if we try to write in the last class we have assumed that it is the flow of a stream through a duct having you know varying area. So, it is 
the flow through a duct having varying area. So, 1 1 refers to inlet and 2 2 refers to outlet. Right. So, now case 1 that we will discuss is the accelerated flow. So, accelerated flow through accelerated flow of steam through a duct having varying area cross sectional area it decreases initially then finally again increases so if the flow is accelerated flow then if we just draw accelerated flow that means we have understood we have learned from fluid mechanics course that the in the direction of flow flow velocity will increase if that is the case you know let us let us look into this particular configuration so maybe if we are considering this is the case. So, you know this is say so this is P 1 and this is P 2 right. So, when the flow is accelerating that means, that, that means velocity will increase in the direction of flow. So, P 2 is much less than P 1 right and d P by P is negative. So, in the direction of flow velocity will increase pressure should fall and it, it implies that d p by p should be negative. If d p by p is negative now if we recall the expression that is d a by a equal to 1 upon k d p by p into 1 minus m square by m square m is the Mach number Mach number equal to c by a. So, that means the local fluid velocity at any particular section at any particular pressure and temperature to the local sonic velocity at that section at that pressure and temperature. So, this is the ratio of the flow velocity at any particular section at any given condition to the local sonic velocity at that section at that uh, pressure and temperature. So, this is Mach number C by A. What we have understood if the flow is accelerated flow d p by p is negative. If d p by p is negative you can understand the area also d p by p is negative that is true k is index of, index of expansion for the isentropic process. Now, the role would be played by the Mach number. So, now I am discussing sub cases say when Mach number. So, sub cases a when c is less than a that means, Mach number is greater less than 1. If Mach number is less than 1 you understand d p by p is negative Mach number is less than 1. So, to balance this equation d a by a should be negative. So, this is the consequence of so this is what we can write. So, that means, what does it indicate? If the flow is accelerated flow, if the local velocity at any particular section is less than the sonic velocity at given conditions, 
then we are we can see for this particular case d a by a must be negative it indicates that it is a flow through a nozzle. So, this is the flow through a nozzle the flow through a nozzle right. So, in other word this part right this corresponds to the convergent part of the nozzle, convergent part of the channel. Right? So, if we go back to the previous slide, so this is a channel having varying cross sectional area. Now, if we look at this particular case, this case corresponds to flow through the convergent part of the channel that is the nozzle. So, this is up to here, right. Okay. So, if we go to the next sub case, case B, right. So, case B, when C equal to A, that is Mach number Mach number equal to 1. When C equal to A, that means local fluid velocity, the velocity local fluid velocity at any particular section is equal to the sonic velocity at that section, at that particular condition that is pressure and temperature. Then what we can write? This is a, this is the accelerated flow, right? So, dP by P is negative. So, to balance this equation, m equal to 1, so this is 0. So, we can see this a equal to constant, right. So, this is m equal to 1, then a equal to constant, a equal to constant. So, it means, it means that when m equal to 1, m equal to 1, throat of the throat of the nozzle is reached. Perhaps you have studied these aspects when you have studied the compressible fluid flow part in your fluid mechanics course. You have seen that when m equal to 1 that is Mach number equal to 1, you can say that the flow has reached at the throat of the channel. So, this is case B and last case is last case of this particular you know uh, uh, part is that is accelerated flow is the C. So, let me write here using different other color. So, that is the this color. So, C that is the when C is greater than A that is Mach number is greater than 1 if Mach number greater than 1, if you look at the equation. So, this is negative d p by p is already negative because this is the case flow is accelerating. So, what would be the consequence d a by a is positive. So, that means, we can write then d a by a equal to uh, positive that is obtained from the so, to balance equation 1, right. If d a by a is positive that means, area increases. So, that means, it is the this corresponds to to the divergent part of the cha channel. Right. So, this is the divergent part of the channel. So, that is the convergent divergent channel. So, we had we had considered 
flow through a channel having varying area. So, three different cases we have considered. Now, let us look into another important case that is case 2. So, that is case 1. So, this is now case 2. Case 2 that is the decelerated flow. decelerated uh, flow or retired, retired flow. Retarded flow. In that case, what would be the case? So, you can understand flow is decelerating. So, that means, in the directional flow, if you write. So, I mean if we consider a case. So, in the directional flow, right velocity will decrease this implies that d p by p is positive right. So, this is the case if d p by p is positive let us again write the area Mach number relationship d a by a equal to 1 by k d p by p 1 minus m 1 minus m square by m square m is the Mach number. So, let us now discuss about several cases say first case sub case is a. Right. So, when C is less than A, that is Mach number less than 1. If Mach number is less than 1, this quantity is positive that is there in the bracket. Now, d p by p is positive that we can see from this particular case. So, when C less than 1, this m less than 1, this is also positive, d p by p is also positive, it implies that d a by a is positive. That means, this corresponds to the divergent type, this corresponds this corresponds to the divergent part of the channel. Let me tell you, I am writing here that is diffuser. See, when velocity decreases in the direction of flow, it is not a nozzle, it is the diffuser that by definition we know. So, diffuser is again a mechanical device and the flow configuration is such that in the direction of flow velocity will decrease pressure will increase. So, that is d a by a that we can see. Now, let us discuss about another two sub cases that is when c equal to a that is Mach number equal to 1. If Mach number equal to 1 then d a by a equal to 0. So, it indicates that a equal to constant right and this corresponds to the throat of the diffuser. I am writing channel again stroke diffuser. Now, that means, if the flow is through a channel having gradually increasing area, then 
also m equal to 1 is the case when throat is reached. So, now the case last sub case is C that is when C is greater than A that is Mach number is greater than 1. What we can write? See if Mach number greater than 1 this quantity is negative d p by p is positive pertaining to this case. So, d a by a will be negative. So, we can write d a by a is negative. So, this corresponds the convergent part. So, this is essentially two balance. equation 1 and this corresponds to the convergent part of the channel or diffusion. So, that means, the diffusion should be of convergent type. Simply we can say, if this is the case, then diffusion would be of convergent type. Okay. So, now these are the case, if we try to summarize, basically you know that we have discussed several cases by considering several values of Mach number, several regimes of Mach number that is whether Mach number is greater than 1 or less than 1 or equal to 1 for two different cases. In one case it is accelerating, other case it is decelerating. So, now question is if we try to summarize just in the form of a table whatever we have learned. So, let us write like this type of flow right then accelerated flow accelerated flow that is falling pressure and finally, we have another category that is you know retarded flow. rising pressure. So, we can see now type of the flow is say subsonic. Let me write here using different in another color. So, subsonic flow that is m less than 1 right. If it is subsonic flow we have discussed if the flow is accelerating then this is the convergent part of the nozzle. Let us go into the first case accelerated flow subsonic flow that is m less than 1 that is the convergent part of the channel. What do you mean by convergent part of the channel? We do understand if the channel is having convergent shape that is by common name known as nozzle. So, this is the nozzle. So, let me write here. So, this is the convergent uh, channel or I am writing nozzle right 
So, that is that this is the flow direction right and if the flow is subsonic for the retarded flow rising pressure we have seen here that it is the divergent part of the diffuser. So, divergent part of the channel is that itself is the diffuser. So, I am writing divergent diffuser right. So, this is the case this is the flow direction arrow indicates the direction of flow. Now, if the flow is supersonic supersonic that is m greater than 1. If m greater than 1, we have seen from case 1, when m greater than 1 that is the divergent part of the channel, divergent part of the nozzle right. So, basically we can say that is divergent nozzle. So, this is divergent nozzle and this is the so this is the flow direction and when the flow is supersonic pertaining to this case that is retarded flow we have seen that this is the convergent part of the channel or diffuser so this would be convergent diffuser. So, this would be convergent diffuser and the shape would be like this. So, this is the flow direction. Now, last one is the sonic velocity. So, last one is the sonic velocity. Sonic that is m equal m equal to 1. Right. So, that is what we have seen a equal to constant okay at the throat of the nozzle so that is the this part area is equal to constant and this is also a equal to constant and at the throat of the diffuser So, this is the flow direction. So, this is what we have discussed, we have summarized in the tabular form what we have discussed pertaining to this particular equation that we have derived in the last class. So, now having you know this discussion, let us now. So, what we can see that if the flow is subsonic, if the duct is convergent, we can see, we can tell something else, something more from this particular table. So, if the flow is subsonic, duct is convergent type, then it is definitely nozzle. If the flow is subsonic, duct is of divergent type, it is diffuser. So, the word I have written convergent nozzle and divergent nozzle 
because we have seen we have studied that nozzle we we call a channel as nozzle when its area decreases in the direction of flow. Even then I have written divergent nozzle. So, basically it indicates if the flow is supersonic, if the duct is divergent type, then so basically for the subsonic flow, if the type is duct is convergent type, it must be nozzle. If the flow is subsonic, duct is of divergent type, it must be diffuser that we can see. If the flow is supersonic and duct is convergent type, it is diffuser. So, just opposite. If the flow is supersonic, duct is of convergent type, it must be diffuser. If the flow is supersonic and duct is of divergent type, it is the nozzle. So, basically flow is supersonic, duct is of divergent type, it must be nozzle. So, just the reverse, but for the sonic velocity, it is obviously the nozzle is uh, the throat is reached. So, with this you know I have uh, completed the physical significance rather we have tried to discuss about the physical significance of the relation which is also known as the area Mach number relationship of the nozzle when there is a flow of stream through the nozzle. So, let a, now let us look into the mass flow rate of the uh, you know nozzle and whether we can find out the because we have seen that uh, our objective should be to get the what would be the area at the exit of the nozzle. So, that the velocity of stream desert flow velocity of stream can be attained. Now, to, 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 to understand what would be the you know uh, velocity at the exit of the nozzle, let us now try to look at the expression of mass flow rate through the nozzle. Let me tell you here that instead of the volume flow rate, we are referring to the mass flow rate because we are considering flow of stream and which is considered to be the compressible fluid. Now, so basically you know that uh, from the last part we have seen that the effect of same duct. So, it is the convergent duct, it is behaving just like a nozzle when the flow is subsonic. The same convergent duct can be used as the diffuser when the flow is changing from subsonic to the supersonic. So, let me write here one important conclusion that the effect of same duct may be reversed depending on the behavior of the fluid and flow. So, this is very important. So, we can use the same duct sometimes you know as the nozzle sometimes sometimes as the diffuser. Okay. So, now let us discuss about the mass flow rate through the nozzle. So, mass flow rate through the nozzle. Okay. So, uh, again we consider the flow through a nozzle is 
So, this is outlet, this is inlet. 1 1 refers to inlet, 2 2 refers to outlet and we are again considering the same set of assumptions that we had taken to establish the area Mach number relationship. So, that is the flow is one dimensional, there is no heat interaction between the system and surroundings. So, when there is a flow of steam through the nozzle, there is no heat loss from the flowing steam through the walls of the nozzle to the surroundings, frictional effect is neglected. So, considering all these assumptions, let me write again 1 d flow, right? then no heat transfer, and frictional effect is neglected right. So, we can assume we can model the flow by the isentropic process, isentropic flow process and steady state. steady state analysis right so if that is the case and if we apply the steady flow energy equation between section 101 and section 22 right so if we write the steady flow energy equation so if we apply the steady flow energy equation between section 101 and section 22. So, that is the flow direction. Okay. Then what we can write? We are assuming that there is no heat interaction and work interaction. So, we can write H 1 plus C 1 square by 2 plus G Z 1 equal to H 2 plus C 2 square by 2 plus G Z 2. You can understand that when while we are writing this equation, we have not considered heat and work interaction. So, because the there is no heat interaction that we have already assumed and this is not a work interacting device, but you can argue that of course, because we need to have some work we need to we need some work to maintain the flow in the presence of pressure. So, and that work done is already taken into account in this particular term enthalpy. So, what we can write if we assume that nozzle the length is very small. So, if we assume the length of the nozzle is L and which is which is very small which is very small then we can ignore even there is little elevation difference but if the length is very small we can ignore the change in elevation that is z1 minus z2 so, what we can write from this equation is that we can write if we go to the next slide we can write 
c2 square minus c1 square by 2 plus h2 minus h1 equal to 0. So, we are assuming here that length of the nozzle short length of the nozzle right. So, elevation change can be neglected. So, in the last class I have mentioned that nozzles are placed in a plane where the elevation is very small, even there is a small elevation change between these two sections that is inlet and outlet of the nozzle. Since the length is very small, we can ignore the change in that. So, that is why the change in elevation, elevation change can be neglected. So, we can write from this equation is that C d C plus d h equal to 0. So, say this is equation number 1. Right. So, this is equation number 1. Now, we have discussed that as we have learned from thermodynamics for any process at any state point we can write for any process at any state point. we can write T d s equal to d h minus V d p. So, this is the second T d s equation that you have learned from basic thermodynamics course. Now, this we can write for any process. In fact, we also can write T d s is equal to d u plus V d p for any process. So, for any process this equation can be written at any state point. Now, the question is we have assumed rather we have tried to model the flow by the isent by an isentropic process. So, since the process is the flow is modeled by an isentropic process. So, we can write d h equal to V d p. So, d p by rho. So, we can write since the flow is model by an isentropic process. So, now what we can write d h equal to d p by rho if we give name of this equation is 2 if we use equation 2 in equation 1, we can write C d C plus d p by rho equal to 0. So, that means, on using equation 2 in equation 1, we get this. Right? So, this is what we are writing. Now, we can again get we can integrate this equation from state point from section 1 to 2, then we can relate the change in velocity of steam as it moves from the inlet section to the outlet outlet section of the nozzle. So, eventually we have this equation and if we try to integrate this equation, we can write the change in velocity from change in velocity of steam as it moves from section 1 to section 2 and we can relate in terms of the pressure and density. So, from there we can at least get the expression of velocity at the exit of the nozzle. Why? We need to have the flow velocity at the exit of the nozzle because we are trying to figure out the expression of mass flow rate through the nozzle and the mass flow rate of nozzle which is important at the exit of the nozzle. See mass flow rate at the exit of the nozzle should be 
density, velocity and the cross sectional area. Now, the velocity at the exit of the nozzle is very very important because that velocity will dictate the energy of steam that we are having before it strike the turbine before steam strikes the turbine blades. So, that is why it is very important. So, we shall again process from this equation that is integral 1 to 2 C D C plus 1 to 2 D P by rho equal to 0. So, that we can write or we can simply take this in this form integral C D C 1 to 2 equal to minus d p by rho 1 to 2. See this is p this is rho. So, what we need to do? We need to complete, we need to write the expression, we need to relate pressure and density. So, you know that uh, p y, so basically we know that p v to the power k equal to constant isentropic process. So, p by rho to the power k equal to constant. So, if we plug in the value of rho from this expression into this equation, then we can perform this integration and we can have the change in flow velocity of steam as it moves from the inlet section to the outlet section. And starting from this particular part, we shall try to calculate the mass flow rate of steam at the exit of the nozzle and that part we shall take up in the next class. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion from this particular part in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.